Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to continue working on our kitchen, but before we get started we're going to make a small change, uh, as usual I suppose, and we'll turn on our uh, blueprints because, if I just uh, delete this, uh, you can see that the door that slides uh, on the blueprint is actually, uh, let me just delete the floor here so you can get a better look at it, it's supposed to be on the inside and I suppose that's a mistake on my part. So what we'll do, uh, we'll just get our door back here and we'll just rotate this uh, or scale it rather. So we'll just grab, we'll press control and then this will uh, keep the center point fixed and we'll just scale it to minus one with the controls key selected and that will bring our door to the inside. Uh, and then we can do that to the door on the second floor as well. Do the same thing, hit our control key, scale it to minus one and uh, let's just turn our blueprints. Uh, actually, we'll probably need to go up to edit, unhide all, so we get our blueprint for upstairs as well. Let me just confirm that this one is supposed to be on the inside, and you can kind of see there that it is. Uh, so that will that'll fix that problem. And I think actually it's supposed to it's supposed to go the other way. Uh, let's just have another look at that. Yeah, I think it's supposed to scale to the other side. So what we'll do with this one as well. We'll hit our control key and scale it to minus one in this direction. And that'll uh, that'll fix that. Actually, let's go down here again and, and check to see if this is even going the right way as well. Uh, this, uh, okay, so this one down here is going the right way, so we'll leave that. And so now we can get back to our kitchen. And I think I actually, I'd like to change the uh, handles a little bit. Just wanna make sure that these are all part of the same component. I think what I'll do, is uh, just make the arc on these a little less uh, severe. And we'll drag it to, we'll just say 0.75, just to see what that looks like. It's still a little um, angly, say 0.75 again. I think that's, that's about where I'd like it to be. And we'll grab this top line and this bottom line, and then we can drag these out a little bit, say another 16th of an inch. And then we can grab the uh, the end pieces and scale them back into the cupboard. And now what I might do is uh, sort of push the support pieces uh, where the screws would hold the handle onto the cupboard. And I'm just going to push those in a tiny bit. So I'm just going to try and inference these edge lines so that we can get our pink line. And then draw a line down from here. And then we can push these end pieces in. I'll push this in, let's say 3 16 and then pull that out 3 16 and we'll correct that now in a second. Just do the same over on this side. And so now we can fix this up a little bit. Uh, we'll just draw lines down and then we can push this through, erase that one, the top piece, and then we can actually just do the same thing here except we'll be pulling the line down. Go to the bottom, erase these. And then we can do the same on this side. All right, so that's that done. And I think that helps uh, make it look a bit more um, sophisticated, I suppose, a bit more detailed. And I think what we'll also do is make the handles a little bit, a little bit of a different size than the supports. So we'll just try and draw a line across these, top and bottom, and then push them up a sixteenth on both sides like that and then all the lines that won't erase uh, properly will actually just smooth them out with the control key and I think that looks pretty good so now we can move on to other things and I think the first thing we'll do I guess we'll, we'll probably add a bit of detail to the uh, to the range hood and so First off, what we'll do here is find our center point, and then we'll say two inches that way, two inches that way, and then say uh, 0.3 of an inch top and bottom. So we can probably actually bring this in maybe a half inch either side, and then draw a little rectangle there. And this will essentially be a little LCD screen, uh, and then we can do a couple of uh, sort of buttons either side of that. So we'll bring these out 0.5. Uh, and then we'll have a 0.5 inch button. And then go another 0.5 for as a space and 0.5 as a button. And so we'll put that there and like that. And we'll just copy both of these and drag them over to here. 
I think that's accurate. We'll say 0. 0.5. Nope, they need to be further out than that. There we go. Erase our guides. We'll inset this a tiny bit, maybe an eighth of an inch. And then we'll have these come out an eighth of an inch. All right, I think we'll make the screen a tiny bit bigger. Say an uh, eighth of an inch top and bottom. I think that looks all right. Now we can move on to the bottom here. And we'll just bring this in, say an inch all the way around. And then scale it back to about uh, maybe, where the, maybe where the cover line is. About there. And then find our center point. Then 0.5 either, either side of this. Then we'll find the center points of these. Bring this in two inches, maybe an inch. A lot of this is a experimentation, of course. Say two inches uh, either side of that. And these, so these will be the uh, the range hood filters. And we'll just erase our guides again, except these little pieces here will sort of be our uh, handles, I guess, or little clips that you can remove the filters with. We'll pull in a little, uh, say, maybe quarter inch frame around these and push these in say a sixteenth and then this in an eighth so we get a little bit of depth here and then these can go in the same uh, distance as the as the physical mesh itself and then we'll offset this say a quarter of an inch and then what we'll do is push this in another quarter of an inch and pull down one of the lines so that we have sort of almost like a handle piece like that and maybe we'll do the other side it makes more sense yeah i think we'll do it that way and so that will do it for the filters now we will go ahead and add the um the sort of the the overhead lights and so we'll center those with the middle points of these filters we'll center this here on this line and we'll grab our circle say 40 40 uh, sides and drag this out, we'll say uh, 1.2 inches. You can drag this in 0.2. And we'll do an offset line, say a 16th of an inch that way. And so we'll bring this lip down a little bit. So I'll come down a 16th, this will go up an eighth. And then we'll just grab this face and scale it down a little bit to give it a bit of a taper, uh, as this will be the physical light bulb itself. Delete our guides. And that will be our range hood. And now we'll add a, just a little touch of detail uh, for the tops and bottoms of these. So we have, just look at this cross here, that's one inch. So we'll bring this in an inch, and then we can drag a line through here, and then uh, just push this up a tiny bit. And I'll say an eighth of an inch, not too far, and just, just enough to offset it a little bit. And then we'll do sort of the same thing with the bottoms of the cabinets. And so we'll bring a line in there and we'll bring it out an inch. And then actually we'll bring, we'll push this up an eighth of an inch right there just to give it a, just a little bit of an offset. Erase all of that and push it up an eighth. And we're not really going to see this part uh, in here, but we will go ahead and, uh, and do it anyway, just for the time being. Push that up an eighth. Erase our guides. And a lot of this stuff may seem a bit gratuitous when you're doing it, but all those little details definitely sort of add up. Uh, and for the rendering process later on, it'll definitely help uh, give it a, an extra level of realism that we're going for. So now we'll move on to doing the oven. And in this case, what we're going to do is we'll have a separated uh, stovetop unit, and then we'll have an, an, a physical oven to uh, put down here. And in, in some cases, you can, you can make the oven, or you can make the stove, or you can do you know, look up dimensions online for those types of things. I think in this case, uh, just sort of to show off the uh, 3D warehouse, there are a lot of models and a lot of pre-made assets available to you on the 3D warehouse. So rather than making it yourself, if you're looking for a stovetop or something, for example, like this, which we sort of are, uh, not this specific example, but... There's a lot of these pre-made assets available to you from these corporations based on their existing products, uh, which is pretty useful, especially as like a starting point, for example. So we're gonna go ahead and download this one, and it's not exactly what we're looking for, but it is pre-made, uh, so we will utilize it. And we'll bring it in, say, three inches from the edge of our counter. We'll just find our center point for this, uh, this unit. 
And so that is this particular stove top. And I think what we'll do uh, is we'll just go into this, select all, and we'll just paint it white to make it look like everything else. Uh, select, there we go. And we'll uh, retexture this later on as we go down. But uh, for now, we, we basically just want to get these, uh, these sort of these burners and the, the buttons and sort of the dimensions. And so this really boils down to personal preference. What we're looking for here is kind of a strip along the front and then we'll place our knobs on that, and then we'll have the burners further back. Uh, this is sort of the thing that you like, then you can leave this one the way it is, or you can p select another one from the warehouse, or make yours from scratch. Uh, it really doesn't matter. But we're going to go ahead and start modifying this a little bit. And then just for the size of these buttons, we'll just measure these. That's about two, maybe I'll have about three and a half inches, say just 3.5, and see what that looks like. You'd probably want a bit more space than that. So maybe four inches. So we'll have a space of a half an inch and that will sort of be our spacer going around the outside and line the buttons up against that. And then we'll have a four inch line, uh, which will be our spacer to where the burners uh, will go. So now we'll delete the other three knobs because we only need one for now. Uh, we'll delete this other grill as well. We'll find our half point. And we're going to keep our four burners, but we're going to change up the grills a little bit so we won't need the center piece. We'll actually just have these two grills go across and then meet in the center. So essentially what we'll do now is just drag this to here and then push it back in maybe an eighth, uh, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Just so we can have a little spacer between those two sets of burners. And if we just look at our space here, this is three eighths of an inch. So we'll drag that over this way. And then it's a quarter along the top. So I'll drag this into here. And we'll just correct some of these lines. Uh, for whatever reason, the specific model itself uh, has a lot of the edges taken off. But we'll just put those back in just to keep it uh, consistent. And I think actually we'll move this in maybe two inches. Uh, so then we can kind of shimmy the burners in a little bit. So we'll have to move this back over, but what we'll do is just grab this particular piece uh, and then hit the move tool and then just drag it over two inches so that we don't need to go through and drag all those again. We'll just grab these and move it over this way two inches. And maybe we won't do it that far. Maybe we'll just, uh, maybe we'll leave that half inch border. And now what we'll do, uh, just because we need to actually shorten this a bit, but we're not gonna go through and change any of these physical dimensions, but we will actually kind of skew it. We'll just scale it down this way. But what that will do is make these circu uh, circles uh, more elliptical. So we'll actually just get rid of these. So we'll just draw these lines across so that we can push them down. We'll just grab these and effectively erase these lines. And these particular circles didn't really have enough sides anyway. They're a bit, uh, a bit sharp, I suppose you could say. So we, will, we were going to kind of redraw them anyway. We'll do the same for this one up here too. And so then we have that. So now we'll just take this one and scale it up to where that uh, four inch line is. And that'll give us our spacer and we're gonna go in and delete our guides. So now we'll grab this base component. Uh, we'll say stove top base. Then we'll explode our grill and then say stove top and then we can uh, bring this over to here and do a minus one scale. Bring the end in that half inch. And now because this is the same component, anything we do to this one uh, will happen to the other one. And so that will effectively be our stove top. So now we can go in and start adding a little bit more detail to this. Let's erase these extra lines where the circle was. And we'll just go in and square off these uh, and then the easiest way to do that will be to just inference with the existing line and then your purple line will snap to the 90 degree angle. And we'll just go ahead and uh, make these corners a bit less rigid. So we'll just square them off like that and pull them down to there. And we can just erase these lines in between. And we'll keep our two lines there. And just pull these into our blue line and then pull this down. And you don't want to have too many sections of your line. If you have too many, uh, I'll just illustrate. If you had, say, a hundred sections, and you were to draw this across here, pull it into your blue, 
Uh, it starts to do weird things, as you can see. So then if we were to try and pull this down, not only do you get sort of a weird clipping of it, but you also get all these individual line sections, uh, which eventually will start slowing down the performance of the model, but also kind of makes it hard to actually uh, continue building with it. So we'll just, we'll stick with the 12. Drag this across till we get our optimal blue line again. And drag that down. And you can see that this looks a fair bit better, a uh, fair bit cleaner than the existing three section lines. So we'll just go around and uh, do that for the rest of these as well. And just to make this process a little bit easier, what we'll do uh, is draw in a sort of a cutting point, and then we'll use this as a reference to sort of copy and paste the existing lines that we've drawn uh, to the rest of these, so we don't need to draw all of them individually. So now we can just go around and sort of push these down. And so then what we can do is we'll just uh, control pull that down to the bottom, and then we can copy this section, and we'll drag it to about here, and we'll say minus one. Now we want to make sure that it doesn't intersect with any of the other geometry, or we'll sort of start tugging on that. Um, we can erase this little bit here as well. I guess that uh, also exists on this one, so we'll erase that. Put it there, and there, and that'll do it for all of those. So we just got to go around and delete these lines. Uh, make sure that the undersides have faces as well. I'm not sure that they do. Uh, most of it has a face, but uh, not all of it. So what we'll do in order to make sure is we'll just drag one of these up. That way we can check the underside of it. And maybe in some cases in the long run it's probably quicker to just go ahead and, and make it yourself. Uh, but it is nice when you can just sort of get a get a good starting point where you know the dimensions uh, and all of that is 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 accurate and based on uh, something that actually exists. All right, so that will do it for the top and bottom of this. We'll go ahead and turn off our hidden geometry, and then we can leave this and delete this one because it's uh, all those changes were copied to these two. And so we'll delete uh, most of the existing burners. We'll just check the dimensions on this. This is a uh, three and a half inches, and this one is uh, same dimensions. So we'll delete all of these but one. Uh, and actually, we'll probably we'll go ahead and make a new one, uh, just so we can make a, a newer component. And we'll say 2.25 inches. Triple click this, and we'll say stove top burner. We can go in and start sort of elaborating this a little bit. Uh, and maybe we'll add some more faces to it, or maybe it's fine the way it is, and uh, make this a little bit bigger. So actually, yeah, we'll just we'll draw a new circle. Uh, I'll say 60 faces, uh, make it say uh, three three inches. Triple click that, say stove top burner, again. Uh, we'll hit yes to replace. And we can go into this and drag this up about an eighth of an inch, and then we'll scale the top here, and we'll give that a nice taper. And then we can offset this inward even further, say to about there. Then we can bring this up a little bit. We'll taper this one in, bring that up a little bit, and then uh, bring it out a little bit there, and bring this up. And then we'll erase that top line, and then that'll fill it in. So this will be our burner. And now we can start sort of customizing this to make sure that it actually fits underneath these, uh, these grills. And I think what we'll do in this case is rather than change the burner itself, uh, is we'll actually push this down. And so if we push that down a quarter of an inch, it gives us a nice spacer. And then what we can do is go in and we'll just outline where the burners are. And uh, along the back here as well, I'd say we'll, we'll pull that in a half of an inch. And so then we can come out of this, grab both of these again, and then scale them into that line. We'll go into this here and uh, push that down a quarter of an inch. And that will actually push it down to essentially the surface of the table. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go into our counter here. We'll take our stove. we we'll just grab this box sort of underneath and then bring this in a quarter either side. And so now we'll get to where our countertop is and start drawing a rectangle around the base of this like that and see if we can get this to fill back in. I'll just draw a line across here. So we can come back into our 
grills and pull those down so they actually hit the bottom of where the, the new stove top is. And then we'll copy our burner asset to, uh, to up here. Try and find a center point here. And I think what we'll do in this case actually is scale it down a tiny bit. Just so we have sort of a larger burner and a smaller burner. And then copy both of these over to this side. And then just double check and make sure that this one is actually on the surface uh, and it isn't. So we'll do that for both of these. Grab this one over here and pull it down to the, uh, the surface. There we go. And now what we can do is go back into our grills and uh, draw back in these circles, uh, the, sort of the grill circle that we had there. And I think what we'll do uh, sort of in this instance is just draw the circle first and then put it back in. Uh, and so we have maybe about a two and we'll say 2.5 inches right there. And then we can, uh, we'll just say, actually we can just group this for now. We'll say uh, grill circle. Uh, it's not really paramount what it's called because this will actually be exploded once it gets put back into the model. Try and find our center point above the burner. And then we can go into this model and we have roughly, if we just look at the, uh, the dimensions here, about 3 16 uh, So we can just do that as well, pull this in 3 16 Erase that center point and then pull this down to there. And then we'll just copy this circle to uh, the other elements. So we erase our guides and we can just copy these, sort of uh, cut and paste them back into the model. There we go. And then we can just hit explode on these and that will intersect them immediately with the uh, the grill top that we have. Triple click everything, intersect with model. We can erase these extra faces and that should help bring back in some of those lines that were uh, just disappeared. So that's those finally done. And then we can move on to the knob. So this thing is about two and a half inches uh, across. So we can do sort of the same thing. We can triple click this, we'll say stove top uh, knob. And we'll actually try and taper this a little bit. So we'll just draw a sort of a flat surface and uh, connect those lines. We can reverse these faces, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and we'll pull this up about half of an inch. Maybe a little bit higher than that, maybe to about there. And we can take our uh, arc tool and just find like a decent angle. It doesn't need to be anything specific. Just trying to create a taper here. And then what we'll do is mirror this. And this will essentially create the top of the knob rather than it being sort of a sharp 90 degree angle like that. We're just trying to create something that looks a bit more uh, natural. And I might actually, let's uh, maybe pull these in closer together a little bit. And so if we just box in these edge pieces and uh, make all these pieces separate components, we'll just go in here, gee, doesn't, the name doesn't matter. Uh, and let me just click these two. If we have our solid tools panel up here, uh, which you can turn on from the toolbars, just go down and uh, turn on your solid tools right here. We'll just select these two for now, and then we'll go up to subtract, uh, and that will sort of erase the outer box. We can do the same for this side. Uh, and this will create sort of our knob, orient faces. We'll just triple click everything in reverse. Uh, and then we can sort of uh, go back and redoctor it a little bit to make it a bit more like a stovetop knob. And I think what we'll do, we'll just draw another box here and pull this up about that high. Grab our arc tool a little bit, maybe about this so of an angle, and pull this across. And then we can just uh, make that into a component. Find some sort of center point here. Doesn't really matter. And then we can do the same sort of thing, hit subtract, and we can just sort of put a slight arc on the top of this knob. And then if we just grab this bottom face, pull it out about 16th of an inch or so, and then we can pull this up and put a bit of a taper around the bottom edge there. Then we can get rid of this sort of stock ugly knob. We can find our center point here again and uh, find, find a way to in incorporate four of these knobs across. Try and center these along this, we have one there. And we can erase our guides again. So we have the four knobs and maybe they're a bit big. Uh, they are only about uh, two, two and a half inches across. Maybe it is a little sizable. So we'll just grab all of these and scale them down. Maybe about that size. 
And we'll just check these again. So that they're about roughly two inches across now. Maybe that's that's pretty good. And then we'll just double check that they're on the surface of the uh, cooktop. And I think as a sort of a last edit, bring this out about an eighth of an inch, draw a line across here and actually pull this up a tiny bit. About an eighth of an inch is fine. Now just uh, find that center point again. So this is, was close to about four inches. I think we'll just find the center point here and then roughly pull them back, maybe a little bit past center just so your fingers are further away from the, from the grills. Uh, maybe about there. I think that looks pretty good. And so that will do it for the stove top and the range hood. And we can move on to the oven. And we'll again head back to the 3D warehouse and start looking for an oven. And what we're looking for is just sort of like a, a one oven thing. There's some units here where they have like a almost a microwave and an oven built in uh, together. We just want the oven. So there we have this wall oven. And I think this is a, a good start at the very least. So I'll hit download on this. All right, and now we can try and find a way to, uh, to fit this into that space. So I'll just rotate it and it should. I'll just need to uh, modify it a little bit. Get the center there and center it with this. And I guess what we should do before we start putting that in place is actually get rid of this panel here because uh, we don't really need this anymore. All right, there we go, and then pull this up. Um, we'll just go into our sort of uh, x-ray view. And we can see that the stovetop ends here and that the oven is here, so we're not actually conflicting uh, anything by putting it where it is. And uh, maybe we will drag it down a little bit just so the, un the, uh, the base of the unit can be a little bit closer to the bottom. And we will go into this and uh, try and just clean it up a little bit. Grab this and uh, pull it, say, 0.5 past, and uh, maybe 0.25. And we will get rid of the colors, so we'll just triple-click everything uh, and then uh, paint it white just to keep it consistent for now. We'll go ahead and get rid of this uh, Bosch logo. And I think this will actually be sort of a grill, so I don't know why it comes out. We'll actually have it go in a little bit. Just pull it back to the front face first. Uh, and it won't actually allow us to pull it in any further for some reason. So what we'll do is we'll pull the front out a little bit, say about there. And I think we'll also push the front in a little bit, just so it seems a bit more flush with the counter. Uh, so we'll say uh, 0.25 maybe. And then we can go ahead and, and fix everything afterwards. And pull these in an extra inch. Yeah, no, maybe it, uh, maybe it looks fine like that. Uh, I think we will pull them in maybe 0.5. And then we'll put sort of a, a piece on the bottom as well. It's about, say, three inches there. And then maybe we can bring this base up a little bit. And this is very much, uh, you know, changing what the, the product originally was, but we're just sort of making it a bit more ideal uh, for our purposes. And if you want to leave it the way it is, that's entirely up to you. Uh, but we're just doing this to add a little bit more detail, as usual. Bring this down, we'll say... Maybe 0.25, just to give the door a bit of space. Maybe 5 16 and then maybe 7 16 on the front. I'll pull and push in this little, uh, I guess, LCD screen. Try to keep the uh, the square there. We want to keep that. We don't want to erase it. It's, uh, it's not strictly touching the front there, so we'll just click the line and drag it back on the green axis until it is, and then we can push it in about a 16th of an inch, inset it. We'll go ahead and uh, actually erase these knobs for now. Uh, and then we can, what we can do is be a little bit cheeky afterwards and use these stovetop knobs down here. And that'll, of course, uh, not only will it look better, but it'll, of course, it'll keep it all sort of uniform. And sort of as one little final detail, we'll take our uh, measuring tape and toss in a uh, eighth of an inch line. And we'll just drag this around. And then what we can do is bring that in a sixteenth of an inch. And again, just for a little extra detail. And maybe an eighth inch is a little too thick. So what we'll do is pull it down. We'll erase actually the little lines, miss these. Uh, we'll pull it down a sixteenth of an inch and we'll just leave a sixteenth of an inch space. And then of course, uh, do it for the top as well. All right, so that does it for that. So then what we can do is go in and grab two of these. Actually, we'll just grab one. Uh, pull this over three inches that way. 
three inches this way. Find our center point vertically. And we'll paste this in, but we will need to drag it out and rotate it 90 degrees. And then uh, center it top and uh, bottom. And that's that one. And then drag it over to this side. Find the center point right about there. And that will do it for our, uh, our oven. And I think that looks pretty good. If we just go in and, and measure this, see what sort of the oven size is. Uh, two by twos is about 26 inches across that way. Uh, and then about 18 inches top to bottom, kind of for the door. And if you want to go ahead and do the interior of the oven as well, you can do that. Uh, really no reason you can't. But I think for us, that will do it for this. Uh, we didn't really get as much done as we wanted to do this video. Uh, but we did sort of get uh, the you know the, the stove and the oven and the, the range hood finished, which is great. Uh, but uh, obviously a lot more uh, work involved in this than I originally thought. Uh, but next time we'll we'll move on to doing the fridge, and hopefully uh, we'll get time to uh, start doing some work on the island as well. So let's just flick on our shadows here and see what everything looks like. And uh, sometimes I'm just noticing now uh, when you add models from uh, the warehouse they have their own layers built in and in this case there's obviously uh, some of these uh, some of these layers on their own so then effectively what we can do is if we uh, pick a layer for this item to be on say first floor we can go to this layer and say the click the minus button it prompts you with uh, that the layer is not empty and you can move it if you want so we'll just say move contents to current layer and then that will move it to the first floor so we'll do that, and then we can do the same for the oven. So we'll say first floor again, uh, and then we, what we can do is click this, minus, move contents to current layer, and there we go. We can just keep our layers organized uh, with the layers we created rather than ones from the warehouse, uh, and then that will do that. So we can just get out of this. So that'll go ahead and wrap things up for now. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.